We knew from almost the very first day that we wanted to make Prince of Persia an open world game. Um, simply because we really like giving the player sort of that authorship, that control over their experience. Um, by this, we, we've been trying to clarify that we don't mean sandbox. They don't just run everywhere, anywhere. It's more like a network where they are traveling down these controlled paths and then they get to intersections where they can then decide where they want to go. When you're in one node and you want to get to another node, there's a lot of different pathways in terms of how you get there. Do you go up and then over or do you go down and then over or do you go backwards and then, you know, there's a lot of different pathways that the player can take. They have complete freedom to travel wherever they want and they have freedom to, they'll make choices in the game that, uh, where they decide essentially what areas they're going to be trying to heal first. Um, but at the same time, they still have a very controlled experience while they're doing it, a very Prince of Persia acrobatic experience where you're trying to get through a very specific path. With the new open world, one of the problems we were presented with very early was uh, the idea of navigation, like how, how do you get around, how do you know where you're supposed to go? And so we came up with a system that we called the compass, which we have shown. It's one of Elika's magic powers where she essentially sends a light out from her hand, and that light leads the way. And uh, so the player follows that depending on where they want to go. So if if ever you're lost in the world and you don't know where you're going or you don't know how to get there or you can't find the next acrobatic path that you need to take, Elika's compass power is a tool for the player to use to help them navigate through the world. One of the more exciting aspects of the new Prince of Persia is how we've had to try to fit a really epic linear story into an open world non-linear game. Each area has a different feel to it, each area has its own area of story, a different journey for the characters to go on, all contained within the main narrative. So all from the beginning you, you, you know that you're on this adventure, but you can complete it in different ways. Marrying the story that, in, that takes place in that area to the level design all the while making sure that there's this meta story that sits on top of it that makes sense that tells the backstory etc that was a big challenge one of the new things that we've come up with is something we call on-demand dialogue why do you wear that scarf it's lucky i didn't think you believed in that sort of thing i don't but maybe it believes in me this is where the player can essentially talk to, to Elika at, at any time. And with this system, we were able to give essentially optional narrative to, to the player. They can get background on things depending on where they are. They can talk to Elika and almost get hints for where they should go, what they should do in certain situations. There's a plate attached to that pillar over there. We can raise it if we fill that pond. It's a counterweight. The cranks control sluice gates that let the water flow to those control ponds. So it's like a hint system plus a background story narrative for a lot of exposition that the player essentially has at their fingertips that they can decide to go into or not. So, princess. Will you stop calling me that? Well, that's what you are, isn't it? My name is Elika. All right. Sorry. I didn't catch your name. That's because I didn't give it to you. Just as an example, the characters are going to start off as strangers. They don't know each other at the beginning of the game, uh, the prince and, and, uh, and companion. But just as when you meet anybody else, you get to know that person that you're on the journey with. What was that? How did you... Hey! I'm all right. It's nothing. It looks like it. The fertile ground is pure now. It will stop Araman using its energy. So he's trapped. No. We must heal the other fertile grounds. Every aspect works towards that same vision. And so now when you're playing the game, you don't feel torn apart by different aspects of it. It really does. It just lets you be in the world and lets you run around in it. So I think like the biggest reward for players that play the game is that they will feel completely immersed in it because everything in the game is pointing them into the game.